Rachel and I have come south to investigate the unsolved case of the Daytona Beach serial killer, a case that begins in the winter of 2006, when three women are slain in three months. Daytona Beach, Florida turns a hunting ground for a serial killer. And then nothing for nearly two years until a fourth victim is found. The son of a bitch is back. Yet some web sleuths were suggesting these four murders were linked to the other unsolved serial killings we had already looked at. And what makes you think, again, the fact that these are connected? It scare points the victim profile. There's four victims in each case. Were we dealing with a seasonal killer, one moving up and down the East Coast, who had killed four women in Long Island, and four women in Atlantic City, and now four women in Daytona? It makes logical sense if you're looking at it from there weren't any overlapping murders. Right. Four years earlier, a web sleuther named Scorpio's daughter started compiling her own list of sex workers who were turning up dead in neighboring counties. But then one day, Scorpio's daughter stopped posting. Despite numerous emails, check-ins with other web sleuthers, and even help from web sleuth administrators, she's disappeared. And while we don't know yet what may have happened to her, we've picked up where she's left off. We have Lacey, South Orlando. Starting in Daytona, we've spread out all across Central Florida, looking for victims who fit Stacy's profile that authorities might have missed. Reagan Kendall. Victims who were occasional sex workers or known drug users. Lisa Renee Harris. Victims who have been dumped along highways. Cheryl Elson. Victims who have been shot. Melissa Easterling. And victims whose murders still remain unsolved. Lisa Mowry, Nicole Ross Scott, Donna Cook. What we found was a string of more than 20 unsolved killings, stretching out along the I-4 freeway, connecting Daytona to Tampa, all bearing striking similarities to Stacy Gage. Maybe her killer didn't go cold, as we first thought, nor did he move north, as some web sleuthers theorized. Maybe he's been here all along, just not in Daytona, and instead, killing women all over central Florida. 85 miles away in Orlando, an investigative reporter named Walter Pacheco had noticed the same pattern, too. I had plotted about 19 different cases along these popular interstates, specifically the I-4 corridor, which runs through most of Orlando. It goes from Tampa to Daytona Beach. And there's also the Interstate 95, which runs along the coast. The type of victim was the same, uh, either a female prostitute or a known female drug user. The bodies were found in the same positions, sort of crouched uh, and shot. With these murders, Walter believed he had found evidence of an undisclosed serial killer. When I called law enforcement to ask them, hey, could you confirm if these cases are in any way tied to a serial killer case? Most of the local sheriff's offices were very tight-lipped, except one agency who actually said, we are looking into something that could be tied to a serial killer case, and that was the Daytona Beach Police Department. This is I-4. These are these murders here, 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 all coming along to be the I-4. 2004, 2005, 2010, 2011. 2000. Hearing Walter's story, we can't say we were surprised. The local sheriffs weren't saying the words serial killer. I'm looking for the public information officer for Polk County Sheriff's Office. Well, unfortunately, he's not in the office today. Carry Horseman, please. Uh, the PIO. There are no borders between counties. There are no borders between states. We have to all work together. How aggressively are you guys going back to some of the old unsolved homicides? The ones that I'm particularly interested in are the ones along I-4. Um, I don't know. I'd have to, I mean, I know we have a cold case squad and a hot case squad. Sheriff sure, Messinger's office. He's not in the office, but I can take a message. I eventually got in touch with the FBI to see if they had any answers. When I spoke to one of the officials over there, 
I was told, how did you come across this? And I said, well, you know, I've been covering these cases, these murders, and now we've had 19. And I see a pattern. One of my surprise moments was they said, in fact, we are. We have a list of about 28 that we've plotted. The disturbing reality is that Pacheco had stumbled upon a series of serial murders, ones that numerous law enforcement agencies outside of Daytona either didn't connect, didn't make public, or refused to admit. This is a much bigger problem and much bigger story than I ever envisioned it. To picture the slaughter of 28 women, all seemingly connected, is not only staggering, it's terrifying. But were we now dealing with a completely different serial murder? One we were calling the I-4 killer. But there was another twist to this nightmare, a private investigator named Bill Warner, who's convinced the terror we're facing is much bigger than we could ever imagine. This goes back to 2007, when a woman in, in the Kentucky area uh, had contacted about a missing daughter of hers. Bill tracked down the girl's body to Ohio, but he soon noticed the same repeating pattern with other missing women, which eventually led him back here. In Florida, it revolves right around I-4, I-75, and up the coast to I-95, even across I-10. How many are we talking about in Florida? Altogether, maybe 60. But according to Bill, Florida is only the tip of the iceberg. The more research I did, the more I dug into it, the more I found it was happening all over the United States. I see cases in Kentucky. There's like four different girls in Cincinnati. What about these girls? Did they ever find her? Nope. In her case, there's no body. Another girl that you looked at? Just gone. Another one? Gone. Over here? Gone. A lot of them have not been found at all, period. They're just gone. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Initially, Rachel and I were skeptical of Bill's claims. While we knew from our cases in Long Island, Atlantic City, and now Florida, that sex workers were being killed in record numbers, how could this many women go missing and there be so little outrage? Yet as Rachel and I would soon come to learn, while many of us were seeing patterns, the FBI was seeing patterns, too. In 2010, they released a map, one that revealed the systematic murder of over 500 women all over the country, whose bodies had been dumped along the highways. The reality is we weren't just dealing with one serial killer, but according to the FBI, hundreds, all working the interstates and all committed by a special breed of monster known as the long haul serial killer. <laughs> 